Here are 10 awesome games to check out on EA Play, a service available by itself or through Xbox Game Pass Ultimate. Be sure to like the video, subscribing is great as well. So here are the 10 titles you should take a look at and hopefully find something a little bit different through a wide range of diverse options. So first up we have Mass Effect Legendary Edition. This is a collection of three awesome, fantastic, narrative-driven sci-fi RPG experiences where you play as, well, your own created shepherd. This package allows you to have one cohesive storytelling set up between the different versions as your choices will directly be influenced and pushed forward across the three games in what is a really iconic and legendary trilogy. This has all of the extra content baked in all of the DLC so you really do get the full scope of the story that you create through your experiences while playing this Mass Effect trilogy. Here is Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered. First off, this game was very, very well loved when it first released, and then secondly, you know, obviously getting remastering here, this is a very visually impressive sort of offering. It's a lot of fun to play, you get multiple perspectives. Are you trying to escape, or are you trying to be the one that catches <laughs> the ones that are trying to escape? And you get to kind of play around with the different perspectives, there's lots of different trials, there's lots of different ways to race, you get to see a, a wide, diverse set of locations in order to compete, and then there's all this kind of tracking on leaderboards if you want to do better than your pals or whatnot or other people in the community. It's just a really sharp, great visually looking remastered experience. A pretty well enjoyed offering within the long running Need for Speed franchise. And definitely something a little bit different to play as the concepts for it were quite unique, honestly, from that perspective of the series. Here we have, well, what do we have? It is Titanfall 2, a single player and multiplayer experience, if the multiplayer is all working well for you. In the single player, you actually get to enjoy the story of a pilot and his Titan. Prepare for Titanfall in this really bold expansion upon the initial release in the series. This one offered a really well done campaign that a lot of people thoroughly enjoyed and thought was fantastic. And then if you can get the multiplayer, which whether that's a PvP or PvE situation going, that can be a lot of fun too. Again, if it's all functional and whatnot as well for you. But yeah, it's just a really robust, great multiplayer offering or a single player offering where you're in a slightly futuristic situation dealing with crazy big mechs that you can control or basically have to dismantle alongside a variety of really cool sci-fi environments as you take the battle to the front of crazy parkour action. This is It Takes Two, which is a game you have to play in co-op. Seriously, you can't play it any other way. You literally need to have a cooperative experience going on here. So it's got two different sides. You play as these individuals going through a bit of a, a rough patch in their love, one could say. But every level and every area you go through is just absolutely fascinating as you kind of slowly learn mechanics and then get to an end where you use those mechanics in order to do something and then progress. And then it starts again with new mechanics and it builds up. It's really, really cool as each of the different acts feels entirely distinct. Then it's got this nice emotionally oriented story behind it too, as you kind of are dealing with the perspective of two parents and seeing, you know, for a fresh set of eyes, what's going on in their life uh, in comparison to their child who's having a really tough time. It's very, very well done and probably the best game of its particular year, won a lot of awards. So this is The Sims, yep, The Sims 4, the latest entry in the long running live your woohoo life however you want to kind of experience. Build a house, meet the love of your life, have kids, do whatever you want. It's kind of a life simulator, but you can live out your fantasy dreams as you really go wild. And there's tons of expansions and new story content that take that a little bit further too. If you wanna go nuts, you know, that's all present and available. You can have different extra additions to your life. But the core game itself offers a lot where you get to completely make your own custom character and do your own sort of journey as you interact with other sims, or maybe you've got a preset sim life that you want to live out. Do whatever you want, have a fun time, take in the scenes. It's a really relaxing, long-term sort of thing that you can just completely sink hours into. And it's just generally entertaining for a lot of players. I mean, this series has definitely had some great 
uh, longevity to it. This is Dirt 5. This is the latest chapter in the more arcade-esque offering within the Dirt series. So you get to go and battle and race across a wide range of gorgeous terrains, and each of these terrains can be completely customized in regards to like day-night, weathering, it's crazy, have intense rain, have intense snow, and then you can play this game if you have a next-gen console at really high frame rates, gorgeous visuals, it's a stunning, well-done experience that I absolutely just loved. This is a great racing game. And then past that, there's this playground area where you are able to essentially build or play maps that others have created, which just adds a lot more to the experience if you are wanting to you know, interact in that sort of way. I think it's just fantastic. It's very well-rounded, and it's just a very, very well-done racing game. Local or online, career mode, it's, it's just it's very, very well-done. And that brings us to Star Wars Battlefront 2. Yes, the action keeps going. The player base still is going strong, at least on the console side of things. As you blast your way across a variety of different Star Wars eras, planets, and with a wide range of different iconic characters brought in. There's also a single player campaign that adds a new perspective into the story that was expanded upon with a late hour long or so extra continuation story that wrapped things up nicely. You can play with others, against others, large scale battles, there's all kinds of different modes, you can do ship battles, you can just be on foot as infantry. It's really still great looking, it's still a lot of fun to play, it's got that fun, intense, fast-paced action, and you can just waste hours away playing this one. Battlefront 2 is still a really good time. It's not too hard to unlock things and progress and really enjoy the scope of what this particular experience has to offer. I do think Battlefront 2 is still well worth it at this time, as it is a complete blast. So this is Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2. So this is the kind of, like, Battlefront, or, or, well, I guess you could say Battlefront, but mostly Battlefield for kids. So this is a fun, kind of all-ages sort of fantasy shooter, where you play as either the plants or the zombies across a wide range of different multiplayer zones, and yes, it's still active. There's also some cooperative modes that you can play together as you defend different areas against waves of foes. But most of it's about the competitive PvP as you face off and try to take over different places and terrain and locations to become the best plant or zombie you can be. There's also a wide range of personalization and improvement and customization within the different characters that are present. Uh, like your pea shooters, you get like all fiery, you get all cold, all kinds of different stuff. It's very tactical, it's very well balanced, and in general it's just a quirky and rather fun sort of game that you can enjoy. I really think it's fantastic, and again, all ages, perfect for them. So this is Unravel 2. This is a follow-up to the first Unravel, and I do actually suggest playing both of these, but this one took things in a nice direction by adding, you know, some cooperative type stuff, some more customization and personalization for your Yarny character as you go through this series of emotionally driven dream or memory type sequences as you're just a great character wanting to deal with things. It's gorgeous visually, it's very emotionally driven, it is a decently tough platformer as well, it's not necessarily easy, and there are some puzzle type elements that you will need to solve as you continue to explore and move through the particular environments that are set up for you. I think it's a really really great game, I think it's definitely worth diving into, and you'll have a great time with it, or you certainly should, because Unravel 2 is a blast. But once again, both of them worth checking out. They do lead off one another, so Unravel 1 and 2 is the way to go. Finally, we have Dead Space. So this is the second entry, Dead Space 2, that I'm highlighting here, where you work through it by yourself dealing with a wide range of dangerous, scary, and generally terrifying creatures that have broken out. Things are just as bad as they were the first time, if not a little bit worse, as you find yourself held up and having to escape and slowly get your arsenal back so that you can deal with the onslaught of monstrous, crazy, creepy creatures that are everywhere. So best of luck with that. You'll have to be very smart, very tactical. You'll move through these creepy dark rooms that have a lot of set stages, mood, and atmosphere for what is a really, really great horror experience in gaming. Very, very well done, very creative, and a well-loved, perhaps the most well-loved entry in that particular Dead Space series. So those were the suggestions that you should dive into with EA Play. Once again, liking the video is great, subscribing is great as well.